Hey guys, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I am sharing some 30 minute meals that just might change your life. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Kristen from Six Sister Stuff and this week did not go as I had planned. I was so excited to share with you guys my ultrasound. We had tons of Christmas parties. We had a sister party. All the sisters were flying in. There was a lot that was happening this week. But the day after Thanksgiving, I kind of had a cold and I went and got tested just to make sure and be safe. And I tested positive for COVID. From there, everything kind of went downhill rather quickly. So instead of having a very fun filled week, this is how I spent most of my week. Now I'm feeling a little bit better, although I might not sound like I am, but I did lose my sense of smell and my sense of taste, which is like some form of torture, I swear. But I showered today, so we're calling it a win. Now because of my week, I haven't had a lot of energy to move, let alone cook. So I'm sharing with you a roundup of my favorite 30 minute meals that I'm actually ordering for my daughter so she can make the recipes for this week instead of myself. All right guys, if you're ready, let's just jump right into the recipes. Gonna start with one of my favorite things is this chicken and apple sausages. I love them because they don't have as nearly as much fat and they're just a little bit better for you. I like to have it into small slices. They're easier to eat. Okay, now that all the sausage is cut up, I also cut up my onions, pretty small pieces. I like them small. Carrots, I did small slices. Zucchini, and then a lot of potatoes. And then add all my vegetables. Okay, so now that we have all the ingredients ready to go, we're going to drizzle on about two tablespoons of olive oil, and I'm just eyeballing this. We're just drizzling a little bit on all of it. Then we're gonna go ahead and just coat this. You want the olive oil to just go over everything. Next, we're gonna add some garlic salt and some poultry seasoning. Now, you're just going to season this on just to taste. So, however much you like, that's what you're gonna add. So, I just kinda like to spread it on everywhere. Okay, now for the poultry seasoning. Again, just kind of spread it on everything. Once your seasonings are on, you're just going to mix it up one more time, then we're ready to cook. Now we're all ready to cook, 400 degrees, 20 minutes. Okay, they're all done cooking and it looks amazing. All right, for this recipe, you're gonna need some tater tots. I cut up an onion, we have some spices, I'll put those down below in the description for you. One pound of ground beef, milk, corn, cream of mushroom soup, sour cream, and last but not least, some cheese. The first thing you're gonna do is cook your ground beef and onion together. Now, I kinda cheated and I cooked this already so you wouldn't have to watch me do it. So once your meat is all heated through, we're gonna add one can of corn that I have drained and then the can of cream of mushroom soup. All right, then we're just gonna mix this together a little bit. Now, if you want to, make sure you drain your ground beef just so you can get rid of some of that grease. Okay, to this, you're gonna add half a cup of sour cream, one half cup of milk, and then about a half cup of cheese. I like to add a little bit more. And then just mix this all together. And don't forget the seasonings. We have garlic powder, onion powder, and salt and pepper. All right, then you're gonna take your cheesy beef mixture and put it into the bottom of a nine by 13 pan. Go ahead and spread that all around. Next, we're gonna add on the tater tots. Now you just wanna make sure they are a single layer, so I'm gonna have to spread them out a little bit. All right, so let's try that, see how it goes. Try and squeeze in as many as we can. Then you're gonna sprinkle about half a cup to a cup of cheddar cheese just on top of the tater tots. Now you wanna preheat your oven to 375 and we're gonna cook it for 25 to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna start by adding two cans of canned chicken. Now you can use rotisserie chicken, you can also use just thawed chicken or frozen chicken. I'll tell you how to do that in just a second. So right now I'm just gonna add my two cans of already cooked chicken into the bottom of my pot. 
Next, you're gonna add one pound of carrots. I just use the bag carrots, but you can use other carrots too. Now the recipe called for a can of corn, so I just cut up two ears of corn, and then also one half onion. And I'm just gonna dump that on top of the carrots. Next, I added six cups of chicken broth. So I had a carton, which is four cups, and then a can, which is two. If you feel like you need more chicken broth, you can go ahead and add one to two more cups of chicken broth. Then I'm gonna add about a half a cup of green onions all chopped up. Now for the spices, I'm gonna add about a half teaspoon of garlic powder and a little bit of salt and pepper just for taste. Now, if you have pre-cooked chicken, you're gonna add your egg noodles right now and everything's just gonna cook together. So I added a whole bag. It was a lot of noodles. If you don't want that many noodles, I would probably do a half a bag or three fourths of a bag. So right now I'm just mixing it a little bit before I put the lid on. The noodles don't have to be covered. All right, so my lid is on. Make sure it's on sealing, not venting. And I'm gonna go to five minutes. Now here's the trick. If you want to cook thawed chicken that's not cooked yet, you're going to take, don't put your any vegetables in yet, and you're gonna go up to 20 minutes and just cook your chicken broth and your chicken. Then the last five minutes, you're gonna put everything else back in and cook the rest for five minutes. If your chicken is cooked, you're gonna cook it all just for five minutes at the same time. I did a quick release there, so I let all the steam out. Then once all the steam's out, you can open your lid and your chicken noodle soup is all done. I love that if you have pre-cooked chicken, it only takes five minutes to throw this recipe together. So I serve this recipe with a side salad and some breadsticks because usually that's what we eat with our chicken noodle soup. Let's cook our chicken first. So each recipe calls for about three to four chicken breasts. So I'm just going to dump these all in. These are all frozen. So we're just gonna add one cup of water and then put the lid on. Now we're not gonna really season these. If you want to, you can, but I'm not going to today. Okay, make sure your lid is on. And then this is the old school. This is our Lux, which I still love and I still use all the time. So it has a manual button. So if you have a manual or pressure cook button, it's the same. So we're gonna push pressure cook. And then because it's frozen, we're gonna cook it for 25 minutes. So you can set the timer for either the negative sign or the positive sign when it hits 25 minutes, then you can just walk away and it will cook. Oh, and one of the most important things, don't forget to check your little knob. Make sure it's on sealing, not venting. All right, when your Instant Pot is done cooking, you're gonna turn this little knob to venting to let all the pressure and steam out. Once all the pressure's out, you can open the lid. And then you can either pull your chicken out and shred it, or you can just shred it just like right in your Instant Pot. Now this is a lot of chicken to shred. And so, yeah, sometimes it's easier to pull it out. All right, our chicken's all shredded, ready to go. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use like a slotted spoon just to make sure that you don't want your chicken to have a lot of juice in it. So we're gonna pull that out. So I had a French bread that I just cut right in half. Then you're gonna put just your favorite Alfredo sauce and we're just going to spread it on just like you would a pizza sauce. So depending on how thick or thin you like your sauce, my kids don't like a ton of sauce. So we'll just kind of spread it out a little bit. Oopa. All right, so we have about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning and a teaspoon of garlic salt that we're going to lightly sprinkle on top of the Alfredo sauce just to give it just a little bit more flavor. I like to add it where my sauce is so my kids can't see the green stuff inside of their pizza. <laughs> All right, and then just a little bit of garlic salt. Just give it a little bit of flavor. Next, we're gonna add four cups of mozzarella cheese. Now, I love just buying the huge big bags. Um, this one has eight cups, so we're just gonna use about half of it. Oops. So about two cups per half of French bread. So just kind of spread it out. Now I'm making it on a cookie sheet just because you're gonna have stuff that will fall off and it will just kind of catch it, which is what we like. So it doesn't have to be pretty or fancy or professional. We're just, we're cooking for our families, so. Okay, a little bit more cheese. Nice, okay. Now it's time for the toppings. Now because it is chicken cordon bleu, you need a little bit of Swiss cheese, so we do have one cup of Swiss cheese here. 
we're just going to put it right on top of our mozzarella. Now this seems like a lot of cheese. You don't have to have this much, but I, my kids love cheese on their pizza, so that's what we're doing. Okay, next we're just gonna add our ham. So I just bought this cubed ham from Kroger. I love how it's already cubed, so I don't have to worry about cutting it. It's just ready to go. So this is where it kind of gets tricky. As you put on your ingredients, you kind of want to press down as you go because like I said, it will, they will fall off. So we're kind of pressing, pressing as we go. Next, we're just gonna add a little bit of bacon. So this is about a half a cup of bacon. You can cook bacon and cut it up yourselves. I just like to use the bacon bits because it just makes my life a whole lot easier and makes this recipe super simple to make. All right, now it's time for the chicken. Can't forget that part. So we're just gonna squeeze this out. Make sure there's no juice in it. There we go. And just carefully, like I said before, carefully put on your chicken because you have chicken cordon bleu. You need the chicken. Now, obviously, if you made this earlier, you won't have all the juices and stuff. I'm just making it all today. So that's why there's juices in there, but you can drain it out and just put it in your fridge when you're ready for it. Okay, we got our chicken, we got our ham, we got our bacon. Last thing we need is just a little bit of green onions on top. You don't have to do this. I like it, it just gives it a little bit of pop of color and makes it look, and makes it taste good. Looks good, tastes good. All right, we are ready. Holy Moses, these are huge pizzas. All right, so we are gonna cook this at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. All right, it is all done cooking. It looks so good and smells so good. I'm just gonna cut it for you just to see. So we usually cut each one, oh, I don't know, like four or five pieces in each French bread. But these are big pieces because there's a lot of toppings on top. All right, let's, let's taste it a little. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh, you guys need to make this one. <laughs> all right, all done with this one. Let's move on to the next. You're gonna add about one pound of ground beef into the bottom of your skillet. So it's about medium high heat and you're gonna cook it for about, oh, four to five minutes. Next, you're gonna add one onion. Go ahead and mix that in and about two cloves of garlic. So we're gonna mix that into, go ahead and cook everything until your onions are soft and your meat is no longer pink. Next, we're gonna add a fourth teaspoon of ground ginger and a half teaspoon of crushed red pepper. This just gives it a little bit of flavor. Then we're gonna add one cup of your favorite teriyaki sauce. I love teriyaki sauce. And go ahead and mix it all together. Now when it's all done cooking, go ahead and serve that over rice. I like to add a little bit of green onions on top just for a little bit of flavor. Nope, I can't even smell it. Tastes like an apple. Well, not really, tastes like nothing. Ugh. Now, if you want some more easy recipes, I actually have some 20 minute meals right up there for you. All right guys, we'll see you next time.